Welcome to my video guide. Today I will be outlining how to get into the selective program slash sub school known as the Elizabeth Blackburn School of Sciences or now the Elizabeth Blackburn Sciences. I have already created a written guide on ATAR notes so if you prefer to consume content that way feel free to check the description below. A quick side note I am didact so if you do have any questions or queries feel free to message me but I don't reply as fast so I'd recommend that you add me on one of my other social medias. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored in any way by the school. I just do it because I'd like to help others. <laughs> I hope this guide helps everyone. Okay, so let's begin. The application process has two parts. The examination under five topics, mathematics, verbal reasoning, reading comprehension, science reasoning, and a write-up. Majority of the exams are multiple choice and are under 30 minutes, with the exception of the write-up. I have created a little checklist that I will briefly go over that will outline all the topics that are on the exam. So within mathematics, there are 16 key topics and within each of those, there are a couple subheadings or sub features that I'd like you to check out because those are the key questions which they'll ask on the test. I will include like a basic question for each as I say it. So for the first subtopic, there is financial mathematics, which will involve simple interest. There'll be algebra for the second one, and that will feature factorizing and expanding. Surge and indices will feature index laws and rationalizing denominators, and a couple negative fractional powers. The fourth topic is simultaneous equations and inequations. Make sure you know this really well because this is about 10 or around 5 to 10 questions out of the 60 in the mathematics topic. There's also linear equations or relationships and they feature gradient formula, distance formula, and midpoint formula. So it's just a basic uh, y equals x plus c or mx plus c. And there's also some non-linear relationships. So there's a couple parabolas, binomials. And yeah, rates and proportion is also a small chunk of the test. They might include direct proportion, indirect proportion, and conversion between percentage to ratios. There's also trigonometry, which will feature Pythagoras theorem, unit circle, exact values. Another key point is mensuration. I advise you to learn all the 3D and 2D area formulas, as well as surface area formulas and volume equations, as they'll include at least two questions. For geometry, there is angles and angles between two parallel lines, angles between circles, angles within triangles that are also in circles. So I'd recommend that you pick those up. For statistics, there's a little bit of interquartile range. It will probably be in the form of a graph. And there's also key words that you need to learn, such as range, average, median, mean, mode. For probability, it's fairly basic, only featuring Venn diagrams and tree diagrams. For polynomials, there are division of polynomials, and it will feature like remainder theorem and factor theorem. It might ask you to uh, factorize one polynomial within the test, and they might also include functions and logarithms, but I'm not, I'm not sure if they included it in this year's JMSS exam, which is pretty similar to the EBIS exam. And yeah, once again, there's circle geometry and there are nine theorems within it. I'd recommend like touching base with nine, just in case that you do encounter any. And then there is a bit of kinematics, mainly how fast is one person going? So if two people are moving at different speeds, at what time will they reach each other? That's also a question on the science reasoning exam. And yeah, that concludes mathematics. For verbal reasoning, there isn't much knowledge necessarily, but there is core components from English language unit one and two, which you could learn. It's fairly basic and there are four key topics which I recommend that you learn. You need to have a wide vocabulary for this exam as well because they'll use a lot of words, diverse range to be exact, and they'll refer to a lot of antonyms and synonyms which can all be found in like I'm listing right here. They'll also include a couple definitions such as what does this word mean and they'll also do a lot of relation type questions such as room is to house as cell is to blank and in this case it will be gal. So I'd recommend picking up and reading as much as you can. There isn't much you can do to practice practice for this. And there's also one last thing which is finding two statements which strongly suggest this is also another key question type. And yeah, that concludes the verbal reasoning part. For reading comprehension, I've broken it down into five key parts such as grammar because you need to have a really strong grammar for this. You need to also be able to successfully identify correct sentences as well as the correct punctuation. And they'll ask a lot of questions revolving around key points within big chunks of paragraph. My tip for this is read the questions first, 
find the keyword within that question and then look for that word within the paragraph and that will generally give you the answer a couple words around it. For correcting grammar, you just have to, like I said, learn all the grammar within English and understand it very well. And you also need to find definitions within a sentence. In my opinion, I found reading comprehension to be my strongest subject, yet I didn't study for it as much. Yeah, I, I didn't really prepare at all for it. I guess reading really helped because I read a decent chunk of books. So if you've read a lot of books, you should be fine with this. And once again, it is similar to the John Monash exam. So if you've done that previously, you should have experience or an advantage when doing this exam. So the last multiple choice exam is the science reasoning exam and this contains a lot of basic knowledge from year 7 all the way up till year 10. And I'll, I found a couple topics which are very important such as physics, chemistry and biology. I've found some key areas which they normally put on the test so I will be outlining them now. So for biology they normally ask about cells particularly organelles. They also ask a bit about photosynthesis such as what is the equation for it. For chemistry, they ask the they talk a lot about the first 20 elements. They talk about valence electrons, organic molecules, how it works, and reactions between elements as well. Normally finding precipitation, they'll give it in like a graph form and then they'll ask you to find which elements cause their precipitation. They also touch on like periodic table groups, so what are the um, groups on the 20th element or what's the group on the 10th element or something similar to that. For physics, they normally ask about kinematics, so laws of motion, which is like distance over time equals speed. They'll ask about weights, pulleys and gears. Pulleys and gears are a lot, but it's only one question out of 15 or 30. There also is a bit of experimental design interpretation, which means like graph analysis or report analysis based on like a science report and they ask for like variables and precision and accuracy and one key thing to note is x the x-axis is normally time but that really depends on what you're working with okay so for the last part of the exam there is a writing component and that comprises of a topic with what do you want to do in the future why and how can ebus help you and in this piece i recommend writing whatever you want like outline exactly how ebus can help you and prepare like a short 15 to 30 minute uh, three paragraph essay or persuasive piece explaining like what you want to do with ebus and yeah you should be sad if you do that one quick note though is they never asked for it at all like it's not even uh corrected by edgy test and nor is it brought up in the interview i haven't asked the coordinator yet but i'm pretty sure it does have a bit of a contribution to your entrance so i would recommend like focusing on it still because they might bring it up on the interviews i'm not too sure like for the past two years or three years they haven't really said anything about it that will conclude my checklist slash brief overview of and tips for what you need to do for the exam Okay, so now I will be outlining my past experience with tutors as well as what I did for preparation. So I did Jack tutoring for JMSS entrance in years 9 to 10, which provided similar conditions to what the EBIS and John Monash exams are like. However, their program didn't really teach content. It pretty much just told me you are bad at this, you are bad at that. Now if you can be bothered, go learn it outside. <laughs> Another downside to it was it's only year 9 to 10 entrance, not year 10 to 11 entrance. And since I normally get a superior for reading comprehension and verbal reasoning, I decided to also get a maths, a one-on-one -on -one maths tutor to help me with my basic skills and help me get a higher score for that. That's what allowed me to get a high average for mathematics, a high average for verbal reasoning, and a superior for his reading comprehension. But my science reasoning was so bad, like an above average, but still could have been better. Anyhow, let's talk about tutoring. So since there aren't really tuitions for EBIS and there wasn't much information for it, I decided both to provide the information for free and also create a tu tutoring platform slash meetup sort of thing where if people need it, I am able to provide it. So I've created practice tests in the link in the description below. So those questions that I've included throughout the video, they are taken from my practice test that I've been working on throughout the holidays and up until now. And so if you ever want any like resources for the test, feel free to either message me directly and then yeah, we could sort things out such as tutoring one-on-one -on -one, or I can get even one of my friends to help you out and just go over the course content. If you don't want to do any of that, there are tests 
for about $35, but if you use my code right here, 10 off, you're able to get a 10% discount. And yeah, like those are my rates. For in-person tutoring, I charge about 30 an hour, so if people are curious about that, feel free to contact me over my social medias. And by no means do you have to purchase these tests or arrange for tutoring. I'm just saying that if you need it, they're there, and I'm glad to provide them to you. Since a lot of my friends and a lot of the people in the year level below, they didn't really need anything. All you have to do really is just be motivated and learn all the content that I give you for free. That's all you really need to do. In terms of studying, I only studied two weeks before the exam. I did like four hours of maths maybe a day up until the exam. And I didn't really prepare much for verbal reasoning or reading comp, but I did prepare a write-up. After this, results and interviews are given which is about two to four weeks after, and then an interview stage occurs. But for the purpose of this video, that is not going to be included, and instead, a second part to this how to get into EBIS video will come out closer to the interview date. And yeah, this is JC. I hope that you found today's content very insightful and helpful. I hope that all of you who are taking the exam this year and in the future years are able to do their very best and get into their school. As well as, even if you don't get into it, I just wish you guys the very best. You guys try your very best to not regret it in the future. Uh, this is JC, thanks for watching, and see you guys next time. Okay, so one last thing before this video ends. I'm going to be breaking up this uh, video series about how to get into EBIS into three parts. Part 1, which is what you've already seen. Part 2 will be a frequently asked questions video slash ask me anything video. And that will be all about EBIS related. So if you have any EBIS related questions that you'd like to know, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And then I'll m make sure to include it in the video before the upcoming exam. And the third part will be the interview stage, which will be talked about more closer to that date. And yeah. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone for getting this far, and I hope that today was very helpful. Thanks, and this is JC signing out.